we have just got one of the most exciting updates for new world since the sad news of the delay back in february lots of us were hoping for a pvp update and the devs have delivered this is another huge update um with so much to talk about probably more than i can even cram into this video with uh outpost rush updates expedition updates territory buff updates um the list is huge and it's going to be an exciting video um one thing i really really love about this update is they've sort of shown their understanding and their passion for finding the right balance between pve and pvp and finding that sort of that middle ground that fine that fine line um understanding that they have to work together you know we have to be able to pv and we have to be able to pvp with the right right incentives for both and finding that balance will really have an impact on the future of the game so the first new exciting feature we're going to talk about is the faction control points these are essentially pvp hotspots around the map that are going to utilize the forts when the forts are not in use uh, for territory wars or invasions each fort also gives unique rewards including reduced taxes and increased coin and experience rewards from expeditions. The rest of the buffs are on screen now. We've also just got some more information about Outpost Rush, which I am very excited for. Originally, I assumed we would be able to jump into this as a group of 20. However, we now know that you can queue as a solo player or a group of five. In essence, Outpost Rush is a race to a thousand points. Players get one point per PvP kill and one point every three seconds they own an outpost. It looks as though this will be a two team battle, one fort on each side of the map with three outposts between the two forts. Victory will be simple, but there are variables throughout the match that can help you secure the victory. Players can gather resources to reinforce an outpost, and each outpost has an armory similar to the territory wars, which can be used to purchase ammo, potions, food buffs, and offense and defense items. Players will also have storage sheds to share resources with their team, as it looks like if you die, you drop the resources that you're carrying. The following structures can be upgraded. So gates, protection wards, siege weapons, and the command post. There will be several objectives located around the map for players to work on, including Baroness Hain, who gives a health and defense buff for three minutes, and it also freezes the enemy team's score. The corrupted portal, where players can summon a powerful ally. Summoning circles, which can also summon a monstrous ally who will defend that particular location. And players will need a summoning stone for this. We now move on to more information about the Ice Gauntlet. Yes, the Ice Gauntlet has officially landed and you lucky alpha testers out there will get a first look and test. I speculated in my last video what the skills may be and what they may do, but we now know the names of the two mastery skill trees. The Ice Tempest, which focuses on damage and area denial, and the Ice Conjurer, which focuses on crowd control, protection, and a deployable ice pylon that fights alongside player, improving their power and efficiency. We also have news of two more new expeditions. Lazarus Instrumentality <laughs> uh, in Reekwater and the Dynasty Shipyard in Ebonscale. We don't have much more information around these expeditions apart from some of the bosses you will encounter during the expedition. There are also now resources that can only be found inside of an expedition. Mobs drop one type of resource while bosses drop another type and i'm also keen to see if they bring in harvestable resources while you're inside an expedition too i think that'll make for a lot more diversity as well a new achievement system is being implemented at the moment there are over 400 achievements in the game with the idea to implement more it sounds like they have a pretty nice system in place um from from the patch notes with a few achievements hidden behind some other hints uh, they've introduced a UI alert when a player is reaching an achievement to maybe help them uh, focus more on that achievement. And I really hope that there are some really nice PvP achievements like there was back in the days of Guild Wars 2 
there are a bunch of really exciting general updates too, which I'll go through and point out uh, and talk about some of my most favorite and what I think are the most exciting ones. So to start off with the PVP and the PVE faction missions have had some updates. PVP faction missions will now accurately reflect the risk level and the time invested required to complete each specific mission. And each faction will now have their own mission types to better immerse players within their chosen faction. Uh, something else to help you think about when choosing your faction. PVE faction missions are now multi-step across all territories and are designed to sort of tour players around, uh, around the map. There are now some really awesome territory control incentives. When we played the preview, there wasn't really there wasn't really a huge reason to hold in the territory, but these updates alone have already made it much more exciting to hold land. Any two settlements controlled by the same faction now have their storage linked to their current location for a small coin fee. This will be awesome, uh, especially for crafting. A resource cart has been added to each town, which will provide members of the controlling faction with a small amount of materials. We're not sure exactly how it will work, if it will be X amount of materials dropped in over X amount of time, or if it will work something like the Last Oasis system, where the more resources gathered in that particular territory will determine the amount of resources that get brought and dropped into the cart. Existing territory bonuses will still apply, which are 10% increased gathering and volume in a controlled territory with 50 extra luck, and a company bonus of 70% fast travel discount to another controlled territory and a 30% reduced tax and 20% reduced house cost. The milestone rewards have had a little tweak too, with the main one being the Corrupted Bane is now called the Azov Staff. It has three tiers and can close different breaches on different levels. Players can also unlock different tiers of camps at different levels. Reaching level 55 will get you your tier 5 camp, which gives you more food cooking abilities while you're out in the world. As well as housing is now unlocking at level 15, 35 and 55. So that's, you can buy three different houses, one at 15, one at 35 and one at 55. Attribute threshold bonuses is a pretty cool addition for both PVP and PVE. I feel like it's going to change group dynamics massively, especially for working together for gathering materials based on what class uh, or attributes that particular person goes. So for example, strength based players will receive a mining bonus, uh, decks will receive a skinning bonus, intelligence a harvesting bonus, focus get a fishing bonus, um, and constitution will get a logging bonus. Obviously players can mix and match these attributes if they would like to, um, but yeah definitely this will have a, a real, real effect on the group dynamics. And finally there is now a secure player to player trading system. Something I was really unsure about. Um, of course, of course, it's a good idea, um, but I'm I'm definitely sad to see the uh, the dodgy trading behind the shed. <laughs> um, you know, everyone would would gather up, drop their loot on the floor, and hope no one steals it. Um, kind of sad that's going to be gone, but yeah, a welcomed addition. Uh, players can initiate a secure trade with other players uh, up to two meters away from them. So that's it for me. There are more updates that I've actually missed, including some balance changes and some UI and visual updates. I've put the link in the description below for the full article if you want to have a more detailed read. And of course, every Wednesday evening, we run a little show called New World Wednesdays where we all get together and basically talk New World. Um, so that's it for me. Until the next video, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, see you on the next one.